Uh, we started our elementary, um, well, kindergarten and elementary, uh, one through five, uh, at the current elementary school. My kindergarten was in the little building out back that might be classrooms again, but at some point it had been changed into something else. Um, our middle school then was the current district office that had been mostly demolished. Uh, we did six, seven, and eight there. We then moved out for nine, 10, 11 to the current middle school that was the high school at the time. Uh, I believe, I can't prove it, but I believe I was the first class to go 9, 10, 11, 12 through the new high school. We started our ninth grade year in the current middle school. We boxed up books, books and carried desks and chairs up to the new high school, and that is where we finished our um, high school career. Uh, I and then it, and then it was built onto after me, and I think that may have been after all of us, but I don't remember exactly what year that was. That was two thousand two ish, I think. I remember we were there. We were the first class to be in the west wing on the new building. I remember my junior year. So the only thing I would add to the schools, um, I was never uh, fortunate enough to play in the new stadium. All of my high school athletics. Middle school athletics were at Harmon Burke Field. Uh, anybody that ever played football there or any sports or ran track there probably remembers the cinder track more than anything. The grass smelled amazing. It was amazing to play football there, but the cinder track was uh, a highlight for sure. What about teachers? Teachers. Oh, gosh. That's not really fair. Uh, I went to school. I can't say that I really paid attention. I did okay. Um, you know, I think all throughout, I could probably try to name every teacher from kindergarten up through, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth grade until we started having a lot more teachers. Um, all of them had significant impact. There were some teachers that um, had significant impact because they were fantastic teachers. There were some that were fantastic because they were young and they connected with the students well. Uh, I don't know how long um, Dave Stewart's been teaching because I thought he had been teaching a long time when I was in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's still, still teaching. Um, my daughters yeah. have both had him. And he's still awesome. And he's still a fantastic guy. Yeah. And I see him at events. Um, we had some pretty good librarians from time to time um, at some of some some of the schools had good librarians um, I don't remember too much about like the fourth fifth grade time frame Miss Antle was my third grade teacher she was fantastic she then got married and I think it was Palante I could I I had no I didn't have Mr. Dennison was a fifth grade teacher that I wanted yeah. To be my teacher, and I'm not going to pick on the fifth grade teachers that I had. I, I did I, I not want to have say him. A quick thing about yeah. the third, fifth grade teacher, uh, uh, Mrs. Gallons. Mrs. Gallons was a very oh, special my. lady. Uh, she would read to us and she read us uh, the hatchet. Chris had Mrs. Gallons. And yeah, Chris was my yeah. class. And I would sit there and just like go to a different dimension. She was very, very special. She was a wonderful lady. Mm -hmm. Also, shout out to Cass Gowans. Um, one call out, I, I won elementary student of the month under Cass Gowans, something that Jay Musser to my right probably never did. But um, yeah, she was amazing. I Just overall, I think the Granville, um, you know, all of the teachers, it's unique. I always found that people would have graduation parties and still have their uh, elementary and middle school teachers showing up. To these graduation parties and i thought that was always um pretty cool that that was that was something that was happening within the community i had a first grade teacher that lived down the street from us on stublin road up in maplewood mrs pinkerton yeah. and uh yeah. so michael michael fun. kissick and i were in mrs pinkerton's class and we thought we could just go to her house whenever we wanted because we lived down the street. So Michael and I would just go knock on the door and, <laughs> and go exploring in their woods. Uh, she had two older sons, Mark and Luke, and they had all these cool bike paths in the woods. We would just help ourselves and go ride our bikes in the, in the woods. <laughs> sometimes she answered, sometimes she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Um, Casey, when you're talking about the old field, I remember in fourth grade running around the track, the cinder track. And when you fell on that track, those cinders got embedded in your knee and did not come out for a very long time. Yep. So Absolutely. I just remember, I remember that. Picking them out of my hands. From yeah. What football games? Get, sliding out into the cinders and for weeks you'd be picking little blisters and yeah. cinders. I'm not I, sure who ever thought a rock hard material like that was a brilliant idea for a track, but I guess that's what there was. I'm having a flashback right now to the old gym at the elementary school. Stage. The stage, oh, yeah. gym, cafeteria. It was all of it. And we had to push out the tables. And then we had gym. I remember having gym with Mr. Zero. Zero. Yeah. Zero. Remember Zero? Yeah, yeah. And he would get really angry when we didn't wear the right shoes. I'm sure you boys didn't know that. But taught like, us to juggle. With the, uh, taught us to juggle. Things. Taught us to square dance. Um, dodgeball. 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 We had lip syncs in there. Do you remember lip syncs? I think you and Chris and Michael actually did. Right. Yeah, it was we Chris, have a video Chris of that. And Brian Luke got up there. Oh, and the, they were like the uh, uh, Blues Brothers. Blues Bros. And <laughs> yep. Kissick and I did the six. Oh, that sixteen, 16 tons. Sixteen tons. Yep. Mm -hmm. Small people. You were. Just shout out. So Casey was playing football down at, uh, sorry, Harmonburg Field. I think it's also cool that the community, anyone who lived in the village could just walk to those games. So it was a different feel. Yes, the new field is awesome, but you go out there and parking sort of a nightmare, especially if you play Valley. But like, if you walk, just, I just remember walking, the whole village would walk down to Harmonburg and it, it felt uniquely cool back then. When I, as a kid, when I was not playing football, I remember getting yelled at by my parents for not going to the game and not watching the game because we spent all of the time playground. on the playground, <laughs> yeah. not watching the game. Yeah. Why do you want to go to under the football the, game? Under the bleachers. Under the bleachers, yeah. on the swings, doing whatever on the other side, not watching. The yeah. We got yelled at plenty of times. Throwing the monkey brains uh, down by the oh, golf yeah. course. Down by the golf course. Yep. Got hit in the head with one of those. <laughs> so one of the most memorable games at, at Harmon Burke was 96. It was uh, against Heath. Um, it's one of the last games the football team ever played in, in Harmon Burke. And it was okay. mid-90s when the, the team started to be perenni perennially bad to – Hey, we we got something here. Let's let's build a team. Let's get a coach. Let's let's be serious about this. And and Scott McMullen came in in a Heath game and hit Heath Mullinex in the corner of the end zone on a <laughs> last second play. And we beat Heath in Harmon Burke the last year we ever played there. And that was kind of the beginning of this. Granville's going to be good at football now. And it was it was amazing. I remember banging heads with Kevin Harvey next to me, and our helmets popped off, and we hit each other in the face, and. It was great. We were, awesome. fre we were freshmen watching the game, and it was just it was <laughs> exhilarating. I'm, I'm not, I don't remember how many points we were down, but it was probably close to 12, 13, 14 points with like 40 seconds left. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure who got the onside kick after the first touchdown, but it might have been me. And that was probably the highlight of my football yes. career was the onside <laughs> kick that then led up to – I remember it vividly. Um, that was a fantastic – game for us and just what a way to leave that stadium for our guys so. that's awesome you were on the playground <laughs> yes <laughs> under the bleachers <laughs> yeah. monkey brains yeah. one thing uh, it just occurred to me the school enrollment was pretty high in the 70s but then during the 80s it went down then early 90s it started back up you were you even aware of that or did you notice it more kids now? Or? I think I just noticed there's more now. My, my class was 103. I don't, I guess, I don't know how many are in my daughter's classes, but um, yeah, I think we were like grade, 107 when we graduated. 2004. Okay. Where were we, Grace? We were 130, and we were the biggest class that had gone Until through at that time. Really? It was such oh a big deal. Progressively bigger. We were aware that we were going to get here because. So for one, I remember our fifth grade was split up in the middle school and the mm -hmm. high school out for the elementary school. Mm -hmm. And then and then also I excuse me. And then all microphones everywhere. Um and then also in high school taking French in the uh like 
mobile homes that because mm -hmm. yeah you know there's just not enough room for everybody so it was really in our mind i think that our school was growing and then the town was growing this kind of thing what we picked up on at least in the later 90s anybody now how many how many are graduating now anybody know well over 200 yeah uh, it's a thousand person high school i mean we have over 750 kids in elementary school right now I know for me, my kids don't know their entire class, and I felt like, mm -hmm. you know, by their ages, I knew every single piece. Yeah. Our yeah. kids say that too. Yeah. I don't buy it. I'm like, how yeah. can you not know yeah. everybody in this? It, it was but hard to probably tonight on a Wednesday night. Run club. Okay, well, whatever, <laughs> right? <laughs> whatever it was. We just park the thing. It was not. It was not hard to park on Saturdays. Growing up. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. What's next? Yeah. Um, and all the other decade programs we've had, Spring Valley Pool was discussed by everyone. So, was that still a place even when you were small kids? Especially, I know when you get into high school, you probably don't. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we were always there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm curious to hear what you guys say, but I know for me, once I got into high school, so that would have been 96, it was not necessarily the coolest place to hang out. But before that, it definitely was. Even on rainy days, cold days, I was at Spring Valley being like, where's all my friends? Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and I we played all the games. I'm assuming mm -hmm. people played before us in terms of dibble dabble and. Um, we love to float on the balls, the one floaty toys you could have as close to the dive, the high dive as you possibly could. And then Ben Dills would jump off and try to make the biggest splash and you'd like get these waves and you'd be like, yeah, and then we'd get a whistle saying you need to move back away from the high dive. Um, I think we, kickball, yes, basketball, ball ball tag, tag, volleyball, ball yeah. tag off the dock. Remember, people oh, jump off the dock and throw and throwing hit over. I had the, the short hoop and uh, I cut my face open on it. Oh. Block, blocking Woody Struthers basketball shot and I just jumped <laughs> right up into the hoop and I gashed my face open and I had to get 14 stitches. I was but just talking about amazing. I love that place. the envelopes. You'd go, yeah. like at the beginning of the summer, you'd go and ask for your envelope and see, like, did I have any change in there from last year? Get some lemon heads. I think lemon heads were 10 cents. Yeah, right. They were always half melted. Yep. If and I ran out of my envelopes money, I would go for my little brothers. For sure. Sorry, mom. She's here. Uh, mm -hmm. If I got like a bacon grilled cheese out here at the shack, but I wanted some candy and I didn't have any, I'd go after my little brothers. Um, sorry, that's horrible. Sorry, look. I, <laughs> I, I, think, I think Spring Valley was super cool because parents would be able to drop their kids off and have zero concerns mm -hmm. and basically see you at dinner time. Yeah. And that was a tenant. I remember I would used to call and be like, all right, um, first first day of the pool season. Mm -hmm. Are you opening earlier this year? No, just 10 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> <Right. laughs> but we did know the Gordons pretty well. So we would get after hours. Nine, seven, 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 seven. Well, and if you were a stingray oh, yeah. and you went to practice early, then you could just kind of like, loiter and hang out and be there before it opened but yeah susan would drop us off at 10 a.m and chip would pick us up on his way home from work we were just there all the time and i think it was freedom for adults but it also was freedom for us kids yeah to, you know make mistakes in our knees mm -hmm. and step on bees yes, yes. Step on bees. Many, totally. many bees. jump off the high dive for the first time it was terrifying and just, just the whole experience i mean it's a non-heated pool and that was made out of concrete and you were swimming with you know frogs and yep. snakes and you know swim team practice was like 8 a.m and you come out of the water with blue Freezing. lips and you know yeah. it was like oh if you just stay in longer and warm up it was always there uh, and it was <laughs> home field advantage was the best yeah. because other teams would come to the pool and be like it's we don't, green it's green <laughs> yeah. be like yeah jump in Good luck. <laughs> see what happens it's natural <laughs> natural <laughs> Good luck, Bex. Uh -huh. <laughs> you and your blue water. 
just shout out to the metal slides the first time you'd go oh down there. God, so hot. If you didn't pour a bucket of water down. Yeah. yeah. A little bit of you just get stuck. Your underside. <laughs> Playing down. Yeah. Remember that uh, fountain that was like. Well, it's, it's our, it's a, it was an artesian uh, well. Oh, the sorry. Water mm. Sorry, Gordon. I'm just family. saying it was the water that it was an artesian well, Cameron. I do remember it, though. Don't you go it church in and out of it. cold water. Freezing cold water. It was very cold. I mean, That's the incredible. Center of the earth. Oh, and there was also tennis there. I remember learning how to play tennis yep. at the courts. And that was great. Great memories. It's well, and summer birthdays, I got to have my birthday party yeah. there. And they would let you announce rest period on your birthday in yes. the summer, yes. which was that awesome. Was it was so fun. I Everyone have... out of the water, please, rest period. <laughs> what, love... what was the use? I've always been curious, and I've lived out there every summer. You got the shelter out there that's on level. What what What's going on at the shelter up top? Don't worry about it. Older kids, <laughs> older kids are drinking a Don't worry about it. Oh, up top. Yeah. What's happening like now? all the not, stairs. Not that I would have. That's maybe a Sally Gordon what? question. <laughs> that was, that what was, was going built, on up there? That was the newest show. Yeah. It was built later on. I thought it was there. We needed more opportunities. Or did Ned just build it? Because he just built his thing. Yeah. That's cool. I was going to say, I love the 4th of July celebrations that happened out there. It just like the sandcastle contest, the cake mm. contest, the penny hunt, mm -hmm. the greased watermelon, and the lifeguards would yeah. always do a skit. And I just loved watching the skit. I was never a lifeguard. I was always working in like the snack shop kind of, that was more behind the scenes sort of stuff. But. I remember when the skits where it was, um, who it was, was announcing over the speaker, but uh, Luke Pinkerton was diving under the high dive and it, and it was like there was a snog, it was the name of it. Oh, it this, oh yeah. Snog, and it would chew the fingertips right off of kids and oh, just diving down, giving all the pennies to throw to everybody else. Matt the, Reeve just benching people all the time. <laughs> Shout out to Matt. Yeah. <laughs> he was like 47 back then. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, um, 4th of July was mentioned. How about the one downtown? Was that a big deal? Or you want to be there? Oh, always. Yeah. Always. And actually, I was thinking, I don't remember where were fireworks at the golf course? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yeah. I was trying to think of it the other day because there was Wildwood wasn't around all the time back then. And then I believe they stopped the fireworks for a couple of years. Yeah. Then the Granville Inn quit doing them at the golf course. Okay. Until then somebody else took over. The Granville Community Foundation of Kiwanis took over and moved kind of the outdoor. But it was incredible down at the golf course because mm -hmm. people would go from every angle, whether it's Rendu or from, yeah. But the village, that was really cool. Fourth of July Fair was another one of those. <laughs> Drop the kids drop off. off. 90s, just yeah. meet up with your friends and run around, mm -hmm. uh, play the carny games, gamble on the quarter machine that yeah. popped the quarters that off. And, and the dunk tank was always fun. The dunk tank. Dunk tank yeah. was legendary. You get to try to dunk the older kids. Lemon and shake the, ups. Uh, the three legged race legendary. was a big one. What oh, was yeah, the, the games? Uh, mm -hmm. What was the other gambling game? 7 Eleven. Oh, the or it was a dice yeah. game. Right? Dice game. That was, yeah. Should have been illegal. Yeah, nice introduction. I mean, it was gambling. like we were nice. 14 years old and one game of draft game so much. Coming home with fish. Are Lots you able to oh, still come home with fish. goldfish in modern? Oh, oh yeah. Hermit crabs. Okay. They probably live a little longer than the goldfish. We had one of the fair fish that lived for like 13 years. Yes. <laughs> Did it grow big? No, it didn't. Really? It didn't. But we didn't change the bowl. Okay. 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 <laughs> Put it in the what up there? Can you, someone else can we it. like <laughs> delete things out of the live stream? Hit the play. Hit the play. Never can play. But the, the fair rides were very sketchy. I remember the zipper. Yep. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. About the sketchiest fair the ride. Zipper. Possibly mm -hmm. ride, but that made it. I never, I never tried. What about the slide? There was a huge slide that you would sit in the bags. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. 
that's been set up by uh, the Stromboli before the Stromboli machine. Yep. Was present day, it used to come down right by the police. By the post office. And you always start with yeah. a lemon shake up. At least we did. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was already lemon mentioned. Oh, yeah. Oh. Maybe it was before you killed the fish. Fish. <laughs> that's my boss. <laughs> Maybe we should move along there. Chuck. Well, I was gonna say I remember we they I don't know who organized it for us. I think then our class we were maybe like fifth graders or something like that, but they had oh, us yeah. on a float and it was like class of two thousand. And I remember riding through town and yeah. someone yelling, This is our future! We're in trouble! And I was like, oh, gosh. What but we were like deemed the class of the millennium. So we had I think every class put like a, you know, something from fifth grade and buried it, and those things oh. never come up. Time yeah, capsule or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's where this video is. Oh man. <laughs> do you <laughs> know yeah, what the time do. capsule we, is? No, I, it's in the it's under, under the, the new elementary, elementary school. Good, it's a good place for it. <laughs> Someone will buried that. Yeah. When did you? One in the one in the corner store. For real. Yeah. Does it have an Apple Air tag in it? Does it have one? An Apple Air tag. <laughs> <laughs> Segway into technology. It's technology. technology. It's Segway, though. Bag phones. We can talk about technology. <laughs> what's next? Is that what's is that what's next? Well, we can go into uh, I believe that technology was my segment. Um, so the the nineties were a, a, an amazing time for technology. Um, the the PC kind of hit the streets. Um, you know, everybody. It started out in the eighties as you, if you wanted to, to use a computer, you were either rich and had an Apple at home, or you used a computer in the lab and you played Oregon Trail <laughs> at school, like we all did. You take your your five inch floppy disk and you put it in the. But in the nineties. Everybody got their own home computer, and it was gateways and and uh, sharps and whatever your your computer was, and it was and it was a revolutionary time because we got the internet too. So in the mid '90s, uh, AOL came, and you could dial up onto the internet and go onto AOL Instant Messenger or go browse the internet and find anything you want to find on there. And and you know we were kids when this came out, so we were kind of we had that childhood where we didn't have access to the internet. We didn't know what it was. And then all of a sudden we were gifted with this and, and we took that to college with us too, which was, um, I think it's what makes us millennials is having access to a, a raw, pure childhood, but then being gifted with technology um, to then harness that. So it's these days, you got tablets in their hands when they're born. Uh, and then cell phones came out too. So it, it I remember beepers, pagers oh, being a thing. Yeah. And uh, so that, you know, it was probably sophomore year, I, I believe it was 96, 97. You could page somebody and then they would call you. So being kids, uh, you try to all meet up and find out where people are going. And so beepers help that. And then occasionally someone would get a cell phone, but the cell phone started out in a big giant bag or the Zach Morris brick phone. And I remember riding around with the McCords and they let me call home and it was like, five dollars a minute so i was like hey dad i'm coming home see you soon and uh and then it dropped off a big leather bag in the middle of the, middle of the car but there's a lot of technology advances at the time and and i mean it, it changed us right we were talking about cds and you could ride around and play your different cds in your head unit and you know i remember you used to put a big rack of your cds on the visor and so you're I driving around have, there was I distracted driving phone. then we didn't have cell phones but we're sorting through our cd collection <laughs> and advisor or our book on our lap trying to put that in i think i actually wrecked the car doing that uh, on 79 <laughs> after picking up uh, everclear tickets Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that is life in the 90s yeah right there yeah. all that. summed up yeah being on like our buses to sporting events and everybody would share cds you mm -hmm. know everybody You're bring their man. big book of binders of cds and yeah had have enough batteries for your walk mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, double My A's. CD player was a single CD that was on a stand that was mounted in a car, anti vibration. Mm -hmm. had a little plug that I put into my tape. Yep. Like yeah. Like a set, yeah. Cigarette lighter for power yes. and then plug it into the tape. And going back to the internet, 
for the kids in the room, you couldn't be on the phone in your house <laughs> and on the internet at the same time. You had to wait until your parents were off the phone and then use the phone line to dial up to the internet to be able to do anything. And if a call came in, it would oh, disconnect yeah. you. <laughs> and then it would disconnect you <laughs> until you got really cool and got a second, second line, line. Right. for the internet. You didn't have cell phones. Yep. So your friends had to call the house. You and then eventually you oh, you take over the second line as your mm -hmm. your private line not on aol a couple uh advancements in nintendo right see so it's super nintendo but the biggest call out i want to say is nintendo 64 which mm -hmm. is not the original mario kart but the best the biggest jumped into mario kart it wasn't the original mario no the original was super, super nintendo, nintendo. Okay. Yeah. but not ghost valley not not near as good as 64 was the biggest jump. You can do four players at a time on the And now you have Mario Kart screen. 8 on Nintendo Switch today. Yeah, we played some Mario Kart back in the day. Uh, going back to the beepers, I got one for Christmas, and the only person ever beat me was my parents asked me to come home. <laughs> uh, same with Chris Wide. He had a car phone. Mm -hmm. Is that what the McCords had? Yes. Okay, same bank. thing. Yeah, And the only person ever called him was his mom. So there we were talking to our moms. I brought a pager. <laughs> I brought a pager home, and and my parents made me take it back. And said you bought it? Yeah, by like a, a Indian Mountain Mall. I think I came home with a pager. Oh, yeah. Radio Signed up for a plan, and they said the, the only people that carry pagers are are doctors and drug dealers. So if you're not one of those things, you need to take that back. <laughs> so I took it back. Returned it to the kiosk. <laughs> Blackstone okay, so we were talking about this. Do you, you remember really, the payphone number? Yeah. Mm -mm. I don't either. But we would you would call the payphone that was outside of Blackstone's to see who was uptown yeah. on the benches. To determine if you were heading to the benches yeah. that night. And there was a payphone in the middle school too. And I remember practice would get out. I would call yeah. collect just before the gym door there, and yeah, you could call right collect and leave a quick message of what your name was. But mm -hmm. instead of doing that, I would say, "Hey, mama, practice is done. Come get me." Mm -hmm. And then she would decline the call, and I knew she was coming. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> that was before pagers or cell phones. This is kind of technology, but we had Grandma video too in the nineties. Grandpa yeah, video was. and um, there good. was another yeah. one. There was the other one on Prospect. Oh yeah, yeah. next to Jack Tanning. Yeah. Yeah. It was in. What was it the was name of Jack's that one? Because that one, Jack's tanning. It was, it's that one uh, moved in, in Grandpa sure. video. What was that one? That was. Um, it's owned by the parlor. Power. 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 Film and Power. 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 not 90s. When did Granville video come up? I think it was mid 90s? Like early mid 90s? I had great posters. Yeah. I would go get posters at Granville yeah, Video. Because I remember when Apollo 13 came out, I actually got the cutout, brought it home. It was like my That's movie awesome. to go to. But in between, right? Like we're missing like Blockbuster over there in Keith, too, which everyone knows in here. Not a lot of Blockbuster. A lot of, but I remember that being a huge thing on Friday night. Something would release, whether it's a new movie. And you get there, and all 20 were rented out. And yes. they'd be like, oh, no, it's okay, yeah. honey. We can get this other movie. And I'd be like, no. <laughs> the weekend is ruined. <laughs> but Blockbuster, was, a, that was that was pretty cool. But then, yeah, Granville Video offered the same in town, and that was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember we couldn't, on snow days, you couldn't make it to school, but you could make it to Granville. Oh, you <laughs> the parents are like, we have yeah. to make it. Yeah. <laughs> Back to CDs. Do you guys remember Columbia House? Oh yeah. Oh. Like uh, all you get like fourteen CDs. Oh for, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. For a dollar. Yeah. And then rec God, record no. credit as yeah. a fourteen year old. Yep. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Got a lot of good music. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I just remember the the envelope, the catalog, and you go through and get your selection. That was awesome. It was like the teenage BMG, BMG and Columbia were yeah. the two big ones. That's right. Um, Cameron, um, in the decades past, kids were free to roam pretty much, and I guess somebody just went to 
being dropped off at the 4th of July, that mm -hmm. you still, what, what did that start to change in the 90s? Right? I mean, my experience, you know, being more of a township kid and not in the village was, you know, so, and also where I was, you know, I couldn't bike anywhere. My parents wouldn't let me bike anywhere. So I spent a lot of my time exploring the woods around my house. And that's now uh, park trails. Um, but mm -hmm. what's cool was I eventually got to the point that I realized that if I traveled far enough, I could get to the bike trail where that bridge is, where mm. the jumping off is. Yeah. And so that became my then way into Granville was actually getting off the bike trail and and in town so but um i just remember just <clears throat> being outside even on snow days or in summers like everything was outside i felt like my parents would always be like get outside you know yep. and, mm -hmm. i don't think they really had the tells to get outside there's nothing to do inside that's yeah. true yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mario Kart. Mario Kart. Double got, you know yeah got all <laughs> but, um, i remember that being one of the hideouts was like that bridge going there and oh yeah off and Especially in the spring. And so. It seemed like it was one of the few spots where parents had not found out about. So you'd never see parents out there. By the bridge. Probably why it was so popular. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever made it to that bridge. I was a township kid too, though. Yeah. And, uh, you know, up in up, up, up Welsh Hills there, uh, there was a pond in the neighborhood. Zazborski Pond. We'd go down there and go fishing and catch frogs and mm -hmm. stuff. Ride our bikes. Great, good neighborhood scene up there um, on the Calder Sack. We, we would go in the woods and explore and find creeks and flip rocks and see what's under the rocks. Mm -hmm. And just the kids would just kind of <clears throat> move around and gravitate. And next thing you know, you'd have six, seven, eight kids together. And then you'd get a kickball or wiffle ball game in somebody's front yard. And then the parents start yelling when the sun goes down, dinner's ready, or they come out with a bunch of popsicles. and. And it's just, it was such a different way. And then you start catching uh, <coughs> lightning bugs and oh, such yeah. a different way of living. Uh, oh, yeah. Looking back on it. I remember just being fed by so many different parents without yeah. really even having to ask. It was just like, if you're there, you suddenly got a meal and, <laughs> you know, a snack or Kool Aid. Yeah, we were township kids too. And it was, we had a path from our house to the Luke's house and our house to the Carrie's house. Mm -hmm. And so that, yeah. But then we would also, you know, the Tempuses, we'd, just I'd just go sit on the porch and wait for people to yeah. walk past. What was the pond out by by Lake Hudson? I think Barton knows the town. Yeah, I think it was it was called Gravel Pit. But that Gravel Pit people, a ton of people would go down there and just fish. And I remember it was a lot of dads and teaching uh, their kids how to fish, and it was. Um, it was so cool because there was carp, so you would learn that carp don't hit, but they're the biggest ones unless you can get the proper, like, uh, bread ball together. But I remember learning how to catch fish down there and bluegill with the spiky mm -hmm. spine and learning the hard way to take them off. And, you know, my dad let me do that a couple of times before teaching me, but then you would walk to Harold's uh, for ice cream, which is then became yeah. actually known as knuckleheads, but, you know, Salisbury yeah. steak sandwich. Fudge milkshake, cheese six. Did that every time after. Right by eight. Yeah, right by eight. Yeah. And then Harold slash Knuckleheads became like the place to go after the baseball game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was big. Ball and baseball. And it was right on the bike path, right near, near Granville Video. Which led you oh, to yeah, the bridge. Back, Granville Video. <laughs> now we're back. <laughs> <laughs> One little circle. Is Knucklehead, Knuckleheads coming back? They are back. It's back. They are back. 740. Oh, they are back. 740. Okay. Mm -hmm. right but it's, I think awesome. it's uh, <clears throat> Anselmo, it is. who I'm oh, staying oh, into. Oh, yeah. right. cool. Same kind of dairy stuff. I do. Oh, oh, nice. Burgers and ice cream. Awesome. Ice. Slightly more expensive than the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> An Arctic swirl with 95 cents. Kids are so sketchy. They didn't have a start during the 90s. So far off. I mean, outside of like being in sports, but even even like the no. rec, <laughs> you know, the rec was relatively new. Yeah, and I, I mean, there were nights that were not scheduled at all for the rec. Like every Wednesday and mm. Sundays, there were no practices, no games, but it was small. There weren't that many teams. I mean, we had the blue and white jerseys that you'd take off yeah, and put on the other still, side. Yeah. That was all it was. You'd go play Alexandria. 
Yeah. <laughs> that was the one team outside of Granville. So we did still have activities, but it wasn't nearly as much. And I think the youngest, I remember the youngest you could play soccer was sixth grade, I think. And then the youngest you could play basketball was fourth grade. Fourth grade. Maybe wrong. No, there, no, there I, was I there was soccer was, earlier. Really? Yeah. Okay, maybe I just played. Yeah, but I think there was a lot more. But it was time. not. It wasn't like organ like uh, rec. It, there was more like uh, red, blue, green teams. I mean, baseball okay. was pretty early when it was P and B, Taylor's Drugs, Owens Corning Fiberglass, and mm-hmm. I'm forgetting Dow mm-hmm. was the fourth. Yeah, they were. They were pretty young. Two, two grades of T ball, two grades of <laughs> league, and you know, yeah. upper league. But but it wasn't anything like it is today. Mm-hmm. It was. That's why we all spent so much time at Spring Valley. Mm-hmm. Because we had these summer days to just do what we wanted. And what we wanted to do was get dropped off at Spring Valley or ride our bikes to Spring Valley and hang out with our friends there all day and come and go as, as we need to. Or even the uniform. You look at the you know, professional uniforms now. For us, it was you got an oversized silk screen t shirt with a <laughs> name of a company on it. And it's then. Like then <laughs> yep. And then, yeah, it was your pants or whatever you could find. Some people wore foam jeans. trucker hat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's yeah. But baseball was in the summer, a couple months. Yeah, yeah, it right. It wasn't baseball like baseball. It's all <laughs> everything: baseball, softball, volleyball. But it wasn't. Round. It wasn't we didn't five it days of anything. practice. Yeah. It was probably like a practice or two a week, yeah. and you have a game. So now it's five days. Oh yeah, and it's year round. Oh yeah, it's, it's just great. And training. And I was definitely not nearly as scheduled as kids are today. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm guess I'm, I would assume that my parents would have. Allowed me to be scheduled, but they may have said no. So I don't. I don't know that. It, it, I mean, my assumption is it wasn't going on for anybody at my age. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. We talked a little bit about downtown. You know, the video stores, but any other places people could like to go downtown? Were there any youth groups? I, it was touched on, but the benches were always like at least in high school. Um, right across the street, great multiple grades, right? Like senior, even like eighth graders would sneak into there. I mean, it was it was sort of the spot, especially in summertime. There's nothing to do, and uh, even if you had summer league sports, even if you start, like, I remember basketball started getting to Nike leagues and Adidas leagues, but even then, it was one one game, you know. And by nighttime, there's nothing really to do. Beauty of Granville, I suppose, but yeah, everyone would be down there at the at the benches, and I sort of see. They were, are anyone's parents gone for the weekend? <laughs> 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 or should we go stop drink at the hardware store I don't know. Yeah. and spend a dollar to get the penny candy? Yeah. And then you take the paper bag over, yeah. or you'd go to Blackstone and get a candy bar, the cookies. Cookies were great at Blackstone. Cookies were great at Blackstone. Salami sandwich at Blackstone. Did everybody have a tab at Blackstones? Yes. Never paid for anything. They just wrote everything down. Yeah. At least that's what Did our was. parents pay? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. But I don't know. I went in there for lunch sandwiches. all the time. <laughs> Senior, and I never paid for a thing. Yeah. They just got they charged to the account. Then they start making us give them a card when we go to Brews. Like, wow. Huh, <laughs> uh, there, there were youth groups as well. I remember mm-hmm. um, walking from elementary and middle school down, stopping at Fuller's or Taylor's, mm-hmm. getting some candy, and then going to one of the churches and either meeting for like a youth group or, or a choir. Yeah. And that was really fun. And the best part was the walk there because I mean, you're kind of free. You just stop in and get some Jolly Ranchers and, mm-hmm. then, and then go. Yep. Sing. I think beyond Granville, I know like City Center Mall was always a big deal mm-hmm. if you could make it to City Center or like hanging out at Mm-hmm. A fun yeah, because yes. like Indian yes. Mountain Mall was like you got to go see other kids, like other gangs. At of heat. Kids. Yeah, yeah, other mm-hmm. yeah gangs. Of kids. <laughs> you see, like, oh yeah, I played them in hoops. That's like Valley. Those guys stink, and then he, those guys stink. New York Catholic, they sort of stink. Just no kidding. Wonder <laughs> them, like, oh, sorry. Grandma. I thought you were saying that. <laughs> no, it was cool because they had like a movie theater, and it was. Uh-huh. And sort of drop you off. And now, city center was a, a huge. It was a deal. different animal. Yeah, uh, yeah. My, my dad would take 
take me to the Ohio State football games. And we'd go as a family and drop my sister and my mom off at mm-hmm. City Center. We'd go watch the Buckeyes and then go pick them up after. And City Center was just like the Mecca. It was such a cool place. There was that restaurant. Christmas. Mm-hmm. For City Center, right? Yeah. Like, and the singers. We used to go sing at the yeah. City Center. We were just talking about that recently. Wasn't it, was it Spinnaker's where they had mm-hmm. bread that came out in a flower pot? Does anyone remember that? I don't know why I remember that. It's <laughs> magical. I mean, just bringing it back into the community, just the playground back in the day, there'd be just on, people would hang out there all the time, just on the hoops that were like eight, eight and a half feet. So that would lend its way to let any age group really play on those. Yeah. And then Chris Plunkett would come down and pick on all the younger kids. Chris, <laughs> if you're out there. If you're watching, Chris, out there. If you're streaming. <laughs> you can hear us. When was Wildwood built? Oh, great call. That was in the 90s. 90s. Yeah, was yeah in sure, the 90s. in the 90s. I think in my senior year, yeah. that's part of what we did. Okay. In our uh, technology. I remember class. the parent. I remember my was, parents working at yeah. it. It was really cool. Yeah. All the parents from the whole mm-hmm. community put yeah. it together. Mm-hmm. It, was it was quite very awesome. Very cool. Can't wait for the parents to be done with that so I can go play on it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it was like, cool. This sounds cool. great. It was awesome. What a testament to the community. Yeah. It's awesome. You know, uh, you take it for granted, like when you're younger. Most though, parks right? are yeah. government driven, and you, like mm-hmm. the community says, "Hey, we want something here," instead of, "Hey, let's go build something special yeah. and amazing." Cool. It's, well, and that's awesome. something that I do remember about growing up. That is, I mean, being a parent in Granville, I remember our parents being constantly involved in levies, mm-hmm. rec league, pancake breakfast. I'm in Kiwanis, mm-hmm. absolutely. <laughs> everything they ran the booths at the fair yeah they were the coaches i mean i think it's part of why granville is so cool and those that come out of granville are have done well or are very good in social settings because i remember every parent i would run into would make you almost look them in the eye and say, yeah no, no 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 you don't just walk in like and you couldn't get away with eye, anything because everybody knew yourself. your parents you could not get away from it so there's just everyone's parents are watching everyone and oh that God. was such a cool i got home from school once <clears throat> and my dad yelled at me for tailgating someone on the drive to school <laughs> because a neighbor had told him had called him and told him i was driving too close to someone like Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a huge piece of the tech that we missed was if you want to hang out with your friends or call a girl, you have to talk to her father. Mm-hmm. You call call her up. Dad answers. Hello, Mister So and So. Can I speak to your daughter? Mm-hmm. Pick someone. Pick someone up. Pull in the driveway. Oh, yeah. Get out of your car. Knock on the front door. They're gonna invite you in and interrogate you. <laughs> we're going to ask what you're doing, what time we're going to be home. Now it's, it's hey, I'll be outside. It's not like I picked Ben up today. I went in and got him and drove him because he's a gimp right now. But that, that, we that time, him. we had to talk We had to talk to parents. We had to talk to siblings. <laughs> we had to talk on the phone. You couldn't text people. So yeah. if we want to talk to our friends, we called our friends up at night. And we'd spend hours on the phone with our friends. And and people we were talking to and wanted to talk to, we couldn't text. We AOL Instant Messenger wasn't even a thing yet until we pretty much got to college. So that was a whole thing. The, the landline, the phone line. Spending well, time and on like the phone. you know, being a teenage girl, parents would call <clears> the house <throat> to ask to babysit. I remember having to hire a babysitter for the first time for my kid, and I called the girl's house. It was a girl you know went to church with, and I called the house and talked to her dad, and he was like. Give you our cell phone number, you can text her. I'm like, oh, that's how this works now. That's bizarre. Or, or if you're talking, to you don't know me on their phone, and the parent would come in, and be like, "Yeah, we're done here. Everyone, yeah. hang up. Hang up." Uh, hang up. Last four of your phone number was two one two four. What? Let's go. Well <laughs> that, was not, that's, that was not free play. I was Thank you. Talk about the hangouts. About downtown, but <clears throat> some of the previous uh, decades, there was a place north of town, Cat Run. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. did people still go out there when you were? I, I did Never go out that. there, yeah. You did, yeah. yeah any, it's the coolest farmer's road, road. Back road yeah. yeah. It 
it was just this quiet, yeah, so this is beautiful. Where is Open for business. Yeah. Um, what kind of business, Jenny? <laughs> Funky business. Okay. <laughs> I don't think Grace is participating in that. Who Okay. It's okay. it's just like it's like you're going past no. the the um intermediate. Well, yeah, and you just keep no. going. Who yeah. owns who owned it? We don't know. Don't know. Don't want to incriminate anybody. Was it three two beer back then? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you were studying. Yeah. So. Yeah, there were Oh wow. Three, three, two, okay. Three, two, three, two. I remember stopping there and with some friends, and we just wanted to look at the stars. And someone came out and was like, "You need to leave." And I was like, "We're just looking at the stars." It's, it's a beautiful, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful road. I just remember loving being down there because it felt so like country. But I guess as we got older, brews, Grand Villa. <coughs> And it was really fun to see Grand Villa transition from the pizza parlor to the Denison club scene. Oh man. Which was yeah. they turned like the other room. Yeah. They turned off the lights and there was a CD player. Pool table. A pool table. Mm -hmm. And there was like a disco ball that they'd set on the table. It was real classy. And but that was the only place Denison was. The Budweiser Ladies yeah. poster. Yeah. <laughs> But the villa was cool because it was just yeah. like a tiny little yeah. slot, and that's where the whole village would order pizza. And we, mm -hmm. we haven't really brought up Denison, but you know, growing up in Granville, Denison was always kind of a center centerpiece, whether it's going to sports camps there or eventually when people graduate and, and go to college there, that was a hangout so, option too. And we used to, senior year, when we would leave for lunch, we would go eat at the cafeterias and think we were so cool. Oh, yeah, that was college awesome. cafeteria. What was that place called up there? Slater Hall. Slater Hall. But then there was like a hangout. Like a oh, little Vander Snatch. That's somewhere like, like there a little higher. On the, yeah, like the on bird. The top level of the bird's um, nest or something. Or is a, that like Saved by the Bell? College? That, was a, that was a bar. Yeah. Even yeah, after I graduated, you just go yeah. in there. Pretty cool. I don't remember what it was called, though. I will say that was not my experience <clears> at all in terms of. Dennis and I guess I went there for sports camps, but I never. I never went up there. It was it was so separate. Yeah, from I agree. my life in Granville, and I worked there after I graduated from college for a year in the environmental studies department. I remember a student saying, "Granville wouldn't be here without Denison," and I was like, "We have no idea you guys are even here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they are two different yeah. entities." And he was like, "Huh? And yeah, yeah." I it just from the ninety when Denison got rid of off student housing and they put them all. Of all the oh, yeah, because yeah. that was a big thing. Was oh, yeah, certain houses yeah. 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 Were, uh, they got rid of the Greek life houses. too, and yeah. They, yeah. they protested and burned couches. And... Oh, that's cool. one, and they slashed our tires uh, the first year that they had Whoa. They slashed my parents tires. scabs. Yeah, oh, oh man, we're not angry about it. Yes. Are we entering the bash, Denison session? <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> Music and who were the artists of the, <laughs> the day that you guys were all into, and then what happened? You had to see. I will say, okay, tying that into Denison. Denison <clears throat> used to have free concerts. Awesome concerts. And I remember going to see, oh my gosh, not the Spin Doctors, but like there were some there were some awesome concerts right outside where the athletic complex is now, and. Ziggy, I saw Ziggy Marley. The, I mean, some great acts. We used to go, like, meet our friends there. Yeah. We we saw a string cheese incident, which is a bluegrass pick'em band out of Colorado. And now it's become super popular in our grade. Just my eight closest friends will still go see them. Um, I think there's a few bands back when Polaris was an awesome music amphitheater. Mm -hmm. Dave Matthews Band was yeah, a really yeah. big night for Granville folks because yeah. we would meet in the center of the center of the lawn and there would just be 30, 40 Granville kids from any number of grades. OAR. Um, OAR, yeah. I mean, I could rip a few off, but like I remember Pearl Jam, Sublime, Nirvana. These are all huge bands that people had their first CDs um, mm -hmm. way back. 
but yeah, yeah. 90s are awesome genre. For the angsty girls, you have Alanis Morissette, oh, which you know, jagged little pill was the I anthem know. for the 90s for us. Yeah. I remember going to see Titanic. Oh, the movie. Titanic. Several times. Many times. In the theater. Mm-hmm. I saw Jurassic Park six times okay. at Indian Man Mall. <laughs> yeah, Indian Man Mall. Yeah. Indian Man Mall, Indian Man Mall yeah. of course. Mm-hmm. Varsity Blues one. came out in the late 90s. Oh, yeah. That Dawson was an, a, a perfect timing was for TV. football. Let's see, Back to the Future, I think one was like technically was like 88 or 89. But it's like to be continued, two and three were in the early 90s. Pretty cool. 90s, it was a great decade for music and film. Mm-hmm. Sure. Friends started in the 90s. When was, I mean, Forrest Gump was... Definitely in the night. What an awesome mm-hmm. uh, soundtrack that was. Too. Thursday night and Friday night TV were big. Ooh, I remember yeah. like going yeah. to play practice and having like making sure my dad set the VHS tape to tape Friends through ER. Full House, <laughs> Family Matters. Oh, Fred TGIF on Friday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fresh Prince. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. There was a high school teacher who would have bonus questions. Mr. Um, Science, Mr. Dalton. Oh, biology. Yeah. Yeah. And he would have bonus questions on his tests on, based on Saved by the Bell episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From when you were kids through, you know, when you graduated. <clears throat> Granville, the overall community, did you notice it changing? I think it did. I got here in 96. And it seemed like, I like that by, by 2000, it was kind of something else. The village council was trying to protect the community, growing too fast and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I, so I graduated in 99 and I did not notice the change because mm-hmm. I was part of the change mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it was the same special community that I, that I had ever seen. I was growing up through it, of course, um, but living outside of it now for 20 plus years, uh, it's still a special little place and, and I, I talk about it fondly and love coming back to it. Um, and that's that's one of the things that I always say is, Granville will remain special because of the people that live here and protect it and and want to keep it this special exempted village um, and protect its history and origins and not let it be consumed by this urban sprawl out this way, which we're all seeing. It's, you know, it took us 30 minutes to get here from the west side of Columbus, Ohio. It's like an hour and a half when we were growing up because you hit 20 stop signs and and all of that, but it's, cow. you know, I, I believe in this place and, and yeah, it's great. I, I think, uh, I think it will remain special. And, and of course it's going to change. Of course it's going to grow as Columbus and central Ohio is exploding right now. Um, but, the, but the people here are what make the community. And I think they're going to be the ones that protect it. I think what we noticed maybe was a little Grendel got exposed to vulnerabilities. You know, as I said, when that annexation, of Newark, and then we had, had this first subdivision show up. I think that's when Granville, especially the community, started saying, "We need to protect it. Let's get green space. You know, let's create <clears> these buffer zones." And I think that's what I remember of the mid to late '90s was after that whole annexation happened. <coughs> At the same time, that 161 started widening. You know, New Albany was still just a one stoplight town in the '90s, and then in 2004, I'm graduating and I'm swimming at their pool. You know, it's you know their high school swimming pool. So I think it I think it translates to what we see overall, you know, the technology change that happened in the 90s, where I think everybody that was living in Granville was Denison, um, Dow was here, um, Owens Corning, you know, everybody, it was more of a community because everybody mm-hmm. worked in the community. And I think as Columbus grew and, you know, commerce and technology became the new enterprising markets, which started becoming more commuting to Columbus. I think that's a, a difference, but I think people that, Come to Granville here and are probably invested in what Granville is and what it has been. Well, I think there are enough people in the Granville leadership who want to balance 
mm-hmm. that growth with maintaining the small town feel, which is good. I actually found just this weekend, I found a t-shirt of a picture of the opera house. I'd never seen this, this print before, but it was a picture of the opera house inside an image of a mason jar. And it said, preserve Granville. It was in my mom's. Do you remember that? I had never seen it before. It was in the bottom of her dresser. I was like, oh my gosh. I kept it. Don't worry. (laughs) I think the more things change, the more they stay the same. Like, a lot of us on the stage know the owner of Three Tigers, Scott. Mm-hmm. Uh, know Brian, the owner of The Lot. Ben Dills is building this crazy company that can do just about all kinds. It does all kinds of stuff. Um, let's see. Lawns, to moving folks. We were talking about using him for a, a golf event where he's talking about we can transport 25 people at a time. I think what I'm getting at is it's just cool to see those that, when we were growing up, were such big pieces and have stayed on and it, it just sort of that's going to instill sort of everything we grew up with even though there's change it sort of still stays the same i still drive in from columbus i'm like oh, man i freaking love her home. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i remember like in high school i'm never coming back to granville i'm moving yeah, away totally. and then mm-hmm. yeah. well i was never leaving granville. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember, I was gonna fly mm-hmm. the coop and then i think it's time to go. <laughs> yeah but i noticed that <clears throat> a lot of my classmates, you know, I never left. I don't think I, I mean, I've been like inside from 70 a couple times, but I never left. <laughs> yeah. And they're slowly but surely, as folks wanted to start and raise families, they thought and realized that Granville wasn't such a bad place. Maybe as a kid, they thought it was terrible because there was nothing to do and you had to go all the way to Columbus to do anything fun. And now they, not now. Years ago, they started to come back to raise their family in the place mm-hmm. they felt really comfortable being raised. And I think yeah. that's evident. I think there's still a lot of that that goes on. That it is what keeps our community like it is. There's also a ton of people that just want to come to Granville because it's beautiful. Yeah. Yep. And we are open to that, and we love those people, and we treat them the same as we would if it, as if it was somebody coming back. And Tourists. Mm-hmm. Tourists, yeah. right. but they're fantastic, and uh-huh. it brings a lot of change, and it brings yeah. different perspective. And that's one thing that probably we didn't have for a very long time was outside, out, outside yeah. influence. Or maybe we did, and I just, as a kid, I just didn't yeah. recognize it. But you know, I, if I looked at my graduating class, I probably went to school with ninety-five percent of those kids for twelve years. Yeah. It wasn't, mm-hmm. it wasn't, a, there wasn't a big turnover, and every now and then you'd get a new kid and. They were pretty, soon, they, pretty soon they weren't the new kid anymore. Yeah. They were just, yeah. oh, yeah, why? Well, I went to well, you, I don't know. I don't know when I showed up. But I was just there. <laughs> yeah. So but you knew everyone in your graduating class. Oh, yeah. And the class above and below. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't believe yeah. that. It's really cool. That's why I don't believe my kids don't know every single kid <laughs> in the class. But it has changed and it has grown. <clears throat> but, but yeah. yeah. The, like the tourist aspect, you know, I think part of it's just our change of downtown to this food industry. You know, we have all these restaurants mm-hmm. and you talk to people that live in Columbus and they, they know our restaurants. They yeah. love to come out to Granville. Whereas growing up, I don't think anybody was creating here to go to Blackstones or, you know, Taking like Aladdin. Aladdin. <laughs> Actually, I had lunch with a guy today and I was telling him about the restaurant scene. I was letting him know we were coming to do this. And he said, you know, fried three tigers. He goes, oh, no, I just go to Aladdin. <laughs> so he like, you know, I get that. Right. <laughs> Well, I didn't even have to ask the question. Granville still the tight knit same community previous generations that it was, and I guess in New York experience is still was. I hope so. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, any anything else anybody wants to bring up? Um, and audience, we didn't have that much audience. Please, somebody want to say something or add something. Well, we get to everything you talked list. about um, not being any activities on Wednesdays or Sundays. Mm-hmm. And, and you were part of the Angel Choir, I think, <laughs> at the Presbyterian Church. And I know you were fairly active in other things at the Presbyterian Church. Mm-hmm. Were others of your classmates active yeah. in their churches? Um. <clears throat> Okay, yes. The question the question was about church involvement. And I think 
you, Chuck, you had asked about youth groups. I know that Young Life was pretty big. It started getting bigger in middle school and high school, but I, there was, I was active in our church, there was a pretty big youth group and choir in our church. And we did things with other youth groups, I think from the Methodist church. Um, and there were a lot more like vacation Bible school every summer was all four churches on the corner. Um, and I think it still <clears throat> is, but I think there were a lot of things that took place at all four churches. And we just kind of and I even remember in the summer going to all the different churches because it was like the Presbyterian pastor would do it this Sunday and then next Sunday we would go to the Methodist church. And and it was cool because you get to see the insides of all these churches that you're like, oh, I've only seen that from the outside. Um, but yeah, I think there I think there were some groups. I, I honestly think the Presbyterian church was pretty big for the senior highs. I don't know about other churches, but yeah, it was a good, it was a good way, I think, to keep kids out of trouble. Mm. (laughs) Maybe. Who knows? I think my late elementary and middle, Mm -hmm. my late elementary, early middle school, St. Luke's Church was like where I socialized with people. Like we just had a blast going to church and then afterwards, like knew the sermon was done. And they were just going to sing one last song, but ever, all, all of us that were all the same age, same grade, we'd run downstairs and we'd start like eating all the food that oh, was yeah. out. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, it was very much like a social, yeah, social place. Um, remember we wrote like the, the Christmas pageant sort of thing. And then it was performed, that same pageant was performed year after year. Yeah, I, just, I definitely, during that time, I had a lot of fun. Same else. Okay, I think this was marvelous. I <laughs> please a round of applause for our panel. Make sure that you didn't sign the sign in sheet because we like to keep track of how many were here. Um, all right, thank you very much. I